We know he was tied to the church, less than a mile to this boat ramp from the church to the boat ramp. There's something here, mm -hmm. okay? We can't tell what it is. Is this where Benjamin's gonna be? What is that, 18 feet deep? He went missing um, on 2-26-2012. Benjamin was supposed to go that morning to his church he used to set up. Members of the church said that Ben did not show up. He did leave a note that was concerning to the family and concerning to the police department. I say he's right here. It's only two feet deep right here though, so not possible. Two boat ramps down. Now we're going to head over to um, location number three. Carson says that's gonna be our lucky location. That's gonna be where we're gonna find Benjamin. It does look like a cab, like it could be a cab of a vehicle. It's only a couple feet tall. I think it's safe to rule that one out for sure. It's uh, like kind of a loop around. Yeah. That you could probably drive right off in. Again, nothing, man. This is all clear. Where is Benjamin? That's 17,049 acres, just in that little area that we covered. That's gonna put us to the south portion of that peninsula. And the locations that we've ruled out and the locations that we have left are still high probable areas. Absolutely. Because yeah. there's, uh, as you refer to it, lost, pa lost person behavior. Mm -hmm. We know he was tied to the church. We know he used to live on the other peninsula. And there's some other um, you know, factors we won't talk about that was discussed amongst the family in regards to another location. Mm -hmm. So there's, yeah, you, you got it's a numbers game. You have to continue to narrow down the scope of the search area for us to get to where we need to get to. It really, a kind of a part of me feels as though this area down here is prob more probable. He would have had to skip over three ramps that are closer to his house to go around and get to that little one. Mm -hmm. Did he do it? I mean, it, it, anything is possible, but as far as probability is concerned, I would say that it's less likely than the locations that you already have question marks on. We have his old apartment even further south than the Jonas Green. Mm -hmm. So around the parole area, he you know lived for a couple years. Within a half a mile is his family church. Okay, that that's basically the only place, you know, besides the library. So you went on to your mapping system and you said, hey, you know, let's look at boat ramps in that particular area. And you found the Tucker Street boat ramp. And you can see how this road right here comes directly from his church. It, it, it's close. We know he crossed that bridge at least twice a week, if not more. Right. And in the mind state that he's in and the things he's feeling, if he has a connection to water, we know that's his closest connection to water is that Route 50 overpass there in the Severn River. Right here. Yeah. 
and you can actually see down into this this little river area now we're talking about a despondent person mm -hmm. okay someone that doesn't want to be found okay when when we go out you know searching that person may actually try to hide mm -hmm. from us you know, yeah. on the ground if we're whistling hey johnny where you at you mm -hmm. know he may actually walk away from the bells and whistles okay that's that despondent personality we talked about that lost person behavior yeah so when someone's in that kind of a situation they may be going there for the view okay while they're you know maybe taking that you know unfortunate action against himself mm -hmm. so let's see that spot that you just chose there it is tucker street boat ramp it's beautiful you got boats you got waterfront and you have the bridge let's look at what's in this area here okay we got a nice running start here could someone launch or drive a vehicle into this waterway can it stay afloat for you know however many minutes mm -hmm. and maybe you know nobody's seeing no it. no one's seeing anything and can that vehicle submerge in this area and settle and no one have seen it since it's possible mm -hmm. it's possible so and I, I would suspect because of the type of vehicle it's a chevy s10 the cab space in the vehicle is very small so the larger the cab cabin space of an automobile dictates how buoyant it is. Mm -hmm. The wheels create buoyant, which is why we, when we find a lot of vehicles, they're, they're upside down. Right. Because when they go in and become buoyant, the engine weight and the wheels right. flip them up and they go like that. Right. And so the, the more cabin space is also more buoyancy. So the less cabin space, I would estimate, you know, a S10 pickup truck is only gonna float for 60 seconds if, okay. if the windows are down it's it's going directly under hopefully today with with the information that we looked at with the lost person behavior you know when we go down to the to the south portion of this this peninsula we can uh, maybe give some closure to the family mm -hmm. today there's a high, high probability for all of these locations because there's a lot of significance behind it. He's got ties to these locations. They're within the five mile radius and several of the boat ramps were within just two miles of his home. So it's we're, we're on the right path, definitely. The boat ramp we are now heading to, the significance in this location is it's, uh, I would say a mile from his church uh, and that is one of the most only significant locations he ever went to outside of his home was the church or the library. And how, how far is the church here? Less than a mile to this boat ramp from the church to the boat ramp. So it's a very, very significant location. And then we have, and then we have another boat ramp up here that may or may not be private, but we'll skate up there and check that one out too. in here it's deep out here 12 feet plenty of depth so we're like 
eight tenths of a mile from the church that Benjamin used to attend regularly. And the significance of this is, this is one of his only locations that he traveled to. There's, there's a lot of water here around Annapolis, Maryland. We gotta do what we do, continue to stay hard at work and just grind it out, you know? Location by location, location. It's tedious, it's time consuming. We just gotta put in the time, step by step, one foot in front of the other, we're getting closer. We're getting closer to finding Benjamin. Weather conditions out here today, pretty breezy, not ideal for scanning in a smaller craft like we are in. Um, so as long as it doesn't get any worse and weather holds out and the water doesn't get too choppy, we'll be able to get a lot of scanning in the day. Everything that I'm doing right now, you know, we're using Sartapo, the amazing search and rescue software that Detective Schlein has introduced us to and is tracking all of our efforts. He can see everything that we're doing. It's recording our line of travel, where we've searched, and points of interest in relevance to where we're at. That way when we're out searching, we can see where we're at in relevance to other locations we need to get to and, and so forth. And you know, if anything gets entered into this while we're out searching, it'll update us. A really amazing app, software, that's going to be pivotal in everything we do moving forward here at Adventures With Purpose. What is it? We got something here. I don't see it. Maybe it was just, uh, just how it was coming up when I turned. So sometimes when you have an object that's coming up and you turn, it expands it, twists it, and can make it look like something else. I didn't see it on that scan. We'll come back through and get a really solid scan over here. scan these bridges you got to scan all the way around these columns because cars will hide from you especially these solid concrete columns because you can't see through them some bridge columns are just really skinny you know metal structures you can see through them however you know you, you, if you if you're not confident you got to scan around them that way nothing's hiding from you I can see everything in here. Almost every block of concrete that's on that column is so clear. Let me show you guys exactly what I'm looking at here. So we're about to come up onto this one here. I'm gonna come in between them, this one and that one, and they'll start to pop up. There it is up in the corner. See it right here, starting to come up. That's right to my right right there and you can see every single pillar clear as day really clear bottom almost 12 feet out here any anomalies are going to stick out like a sore thumb really easy scanning you got right there some old wood structures there i don't think he came off this bridge there's nowhere for him to come off the bridge at however we're here we're gonna check it. You never know what we might find or who we may find. Look at this tire in here. That's as good of a scan as you're gonna get. Really accurate what we're doing out here. So that's the Tucker Street ramp. Now we're gonna go uh, out into the Severn River. We're 
going to go now to the closest boat ramp to his church, which is like four tenths of a mile. It's a little private access, but like we were saying, it's the neighborhood church. Did he know one of the homes near that ramp and he was familiar with it? This boat ramp we just left, the Tucker Street boat ramp and the bridge right here is eight tenths of a mile. Really probable locations. Anytime we can conduct a search where the locations we're at are just extremely probable and just not searching them to mark them off the list. Um, feel really good while we're searching. At no point yet have I felt like, you know, we're chasing dead ends. We are chasing extremely probable areas and we still have a lot to go. I know I keep saying it, but it's a numbers game. You just got to keep at it, keep searching water. Hopefully today we will find Benjamin. If we don't, we'll be back. We're going to work this case. There's still a lot left to do if we don't find Benjamin today. But I'm very, very optimistic we will. So we have Dylan Meyer with us. Dylan is a local from our home state, Oregon, who's a great volunteer, very, very intelligent young man. Let us introduce you formally to Dylan. Hello. So Dylan, what are your thoughts about being on this trip with us as we travel the nation, helping law enforcement and helping families find missing loved ones? Uh, it's almost kind of speechless. Trying to be able, it's almost, it's kind of speechless being able to like bring closures to families and try to help find, um, trying to help find lo possible locations of where they could be. And sometimes there, there's cases that we run into situations where we've searched as many as we can, but there's due to time strains that there's so many locations to search that we're just basically marking off saying we checked this and we know for a fact they're not in that area. Right, right. And we've been successful already on this trip. You helped solve a 19 year old cold case. How old are you? 22. 22 years old. Did you ever think that you would be solving a cold case? Not at all. Wow. Always watch those cold case crime shows with my mom. Always, always t discuss between it, each of us talking about what what evidences could ha could be pertaining and try to get our own yeah. thoughts about it and yeah. never expect myself to actually be here actually looking yeah. for and, people and you, you you you've been a great help um you've been a great help with all of the uh background and investigation stuff that we are um, getting into with these cases it's uh really in depth i, I really wish that you the viewers could see absolutely everything that goes on behind the scenes. There's a lot of hard work. There's a lot of um, cognitive uh, abilities and energy that are just combined and hashed out and you name it. Like there's, and uh, Dylan's been a great part of that. He's uh, been helping us research and do all types of stuff, fixing the RV and, and, and repairing drones. Like, like he's an electronic tech from DJI or something crazy we're coming up over here near the route 50 overpass the significance of this overpass this is one of the bridges that connects these two peninsulas now benjamin lived on that far peninsula and he would travel back across here to church several times a week and as a individual who's struggling with emotional and mental issues and the language that was left in his note uh, prior to his disappearance that was very concerning, um, it really draws me to this overpass because A, we know he didn't leave home. Uh, he didn't go anywhere but the library and here to church. So when you bring water into the equation, you gotta ask in an investigation is, okay, what body of water it could possibly be of most significance to Benjamin? Knowing that he traveled across this overpass to and from church several times a week, this to me is the most significant body of water to Benjamin. See, this is what I was referring to a little while ago as far as the wind and, uh, giving us a problem here. You know, this is uh, 
a nightmare for us here at Adventures with Purpose is the, the, the choppiness of the water providing a really inaccurate scanning. So we're gonna have to uh, make our way up here to this boat ramp, try to scan it, and then get away from this side of this peninsula. And hopefully we can get back on the other side of the peninsula over there where we have our other locations marked and we won't have all this wind. I just got an update right now from Detective Schlein, who is monitoring the platform in which we're using, the mapping platform, the search and recovery rescue platform that we're using. It's showing our tracking on where we're at, relaying all the data back to his headquarters. Um, he's letting us know that the hidden boat ramp that we uh, marked earlier to check is about 700 yards in front of us, which is great. However, he just entered another point of interest on our map in our search area, and it states that a member of the family has reached out to him and provided him with a object that they have spotted on satellite in the water that they want us to check out, which is amazing. Like we're out here searching and information is getting fed to us, entered into this system and marked for us, we can go right to it. Like the, I'm, I'm really excited to have this software, man. It's um, really resourceful. Yep, I'm gonna put the sonar in the water, nine feet. We're getting over here to this boat ramp. Is this where Benjamin's gonna be? It's getting really shallow. It is not likely that there's gonna be a vehicle here. Really shallow. We're, uh, we're about 5.3 feet, 5.2 feet. Nope. It's all right. On to the next. And what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna update in this system to Detective Schlein, who's monitoring us, the conditions over here, so he understands that this area is really, really shallow. It's not possible to have a vehicle here. Right now, these, these waves, it's kind of hard to see on camera, but they're bigger than our boat. Wow, wow, yeah, we were really taking on a lot of water here. So we gotta be careful and stay lined up with these waves. If we get caught by these waves sideways, we will roll. I don't it's, know it's, really, to... it's really important that we, we stay in line with the way these waves are rolling. That's critical right now, you know? Luckily, we have on life jackets that uh, will save us. Our boat is designed to float completely full of water and you know it's won't be going anywhere we'll just have to take a really cold swim we'll be okay uh, but we just got to be really careful at the moment we're coming right up on this overpass over here where this old bridge is this is a significant location for us to search there's there's a lot of uh, a relevance here in relation to Benjamin there's a piece of information regarding this location I cannot disclose, uh, but it's, it, it, it's, it's very promising. Everything we're doing so far on this search is just, man, it's adding up, it's adding up. I'm gonna, even though we're rolling in these waves, I, I'm, I gotta put the sonar in and we gotta start sonaring right here. I need to scan sideways, but we're just we're just we're just gonna have to do it. Just stay stable and stay wide. Anything questionable? No, no, no. There's a lot of debris back there on the end of that bridge where uh, some of the uh, old bridge structure and concrete uh, debris is. And there's a park up here that lines the side of this. We got a lot of stuff over here. A lot of stuff. I don't know what that is, but 
to me. Old boat. Okay, we got an old boat there. What else do we have over here, though? What is that? 18 feet deep. stuff there this is, this is a region you got to be very careful with what you're scanning I'm getting some really good images over here on side scan it just looks like the entire bridge that used to be here was piece by piece dropped over here like they put the entire bridge over here and we can see we're right here in Annapolis, Maryland. There's the Naval Academy right there. So it's a really high, high security area. And uh, we got to get back on the other side of this little inlet right here and continue scanning. scanning. There's, there's a lot of ties to this inn right here. And I'm not going to say any more other than it's very relevant to where we're searching. So we're gonna have to do some really, really over the top thorough scanning. That way we're not missing anything out here because we're working with an area that's just littered with an entire bridge that was dumped in here, piece by piece. And that's what we're looking at on this scan. What is that? What is that right there? That is of interest. What is that? That could be a pickup truck. Hold this. That, my friends, could be a pickup truck. I don't, I'm not like overly confident, but it's one of those images that definitely could be a vehicle. And we're gonna have to do some more scanning. And this is why we always do multiple angles and dip, different. Yeah, yep. with going into multiple angles, I'm gonna hit it at a really good speed coming out of here and see what we have here. What is this coming up? There it is. Uh, oh yeah, it could come right off this parking lot up here very, very easily. See, it's a, it's a beautiful boat. It's like a little cabin cruiser. I don't know what it is, but you can see the cabin. See that? Makes sense. It's right here by the docks, but it's right off the parking lot. You know, it could, it, it could have been a vehicle. There it is again. Look at that. Not a vehicle. Still got to scan this area really well right here on either side of this inn, eight feet deep. Really, really clean, really clear. Man, wind is really kicking up. Oh, this, this area is clear, man. We're gonna have to uh, skate down here to this point where there's a area in question on the map. That way we don't have to get out. This is a location you can drive right into. 18 feet deep inside of here. So we are about three miles from our last searched location. Uh, at some uh, points of interest we have marked to search. And uh, we're here, the water's a lot deeper than we thought it was. There's a parking lot all around this and it's like abandoned here. And you can see behind us here, the road is like right here. It edges right up to this water, 14 feet deep still, 16. A lot of potential to hide a vehicle. Tires out here. That's it. Let's go into 
to this little cove here. Check it out. 13 feet, really consistent depth in here. Nothing. Very clean. So these points of interest that we're going to right now that have been put on the map are unknown objects that have been detected by the marine unit, DNR. And we're gonna come over here and see what they're talking about, what they're looking at. Yeah, this is some debris. Not wood. I mean, just some debris. It's not, not anything big enough to be a car. We'll get there one way or another. Gonna start scanning here. 21 feet deep, right off the edge of the Naval Academy. It's going to be really big stuff if we discover his vehicle out here on the edge of the Naval Academy. Makes sense, you know, the Navy has some of the best equipment in the world, as well as the best divers in the world, so. It would only make sense that right here in their backyard, we're not finding anything. But, so right now we know we have three more known locations to go check. So we're going to hurry up and get back to where we got about four miles to get back to where we started from, put the boat back in the trailer and race down to uh, those other locations while we still have daylight and Mother Nature is cooperating with us. Uh, so I guess from here, we'll go down to your other two points. I'll show you something real quick. And right. I think um, it might kind of blow your mind. Okay. And um, come on yeah. over here. Yeah. Now, with uh, with the tidal river, okay, this is where we are, mm -hmm. okay? So all of these points are some sort of obstruction, potentially a boat, we don't know, but we know this object is at least 35 foot long. Is an S10 35 foot long? No. So let's go ahead and just eliminate this marker well, let's come over here. This object is well, it's seven feet one way, maybe seven feet the other way. So we got probably 14 foot of an object right here, right? All right, so let's see if there's a boat sitting there. There's nothing there, but we know we have an object here, mm -hmm. okay? And you just go through and you pick up all of these little objects. Now, there's a big object here, right? I've got one marked over here. What's this? This is right around the boat ramp right here. So, could someone physically take a vehicle, drive it off this little cliff here? We got, this is probably a road mm -hmm. or a driveway. Let's see what this is. Fascinating. Yeah, fascinating. fascinating right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Here's a road right here leading into a cliff. And we've got an object. There's not a boat here. Mm -hmm. Can we see it on satellite imagery? Let's go into a winter view of this object. Can't really see it here. Okay. But you can see a hard, a hard corner right here there's something here mm -hmm. okay we can't tell what it is so this would be an object maybe to check mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. but just something else to look at in the whole scheme of is to be able to see crazy. that stuff that's uh yeah that's I crazy i tell you what i have to do i have to go and look into some areas where 
where I know there's cars mm -hmm. and, and, and see, yeah. get, get an idea of what they look like. Mm -hmm. So just like I said, just um, another tool in the toolbox. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll get we'll, we'll get situated and then roll roll down there, okay. and uh, we'll we'll look at the map some more. Interesting coming over the bridge was a boat ramp there. I didn't even know if you got to the to left see. there. To the left. That, that road. I saw a road, yeah. but I didn't see the ramp itself. Yeah. So why don't you um, get comfortable here? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And um, park it. And why don't you take a ride with me? Yeah. And let's just kind of. Yeah. Let's do that. Let me uh, let me pull over here. What is this? you it's. It's like a search management packet. It's, got a little, it's like a workstation. Yeah. Okay. So awesome. Yeah. Did that will come in really handy. Yep. There you go. Thank you. It's too nice. Way too nice, man. Yep. Detective Schlein's hospitality since we've been here in Anne Arundel County has been uh, epic. Absolutely. Very epic. definitely drive down here when we were up on the bridge you could see though how, how shallow it is mm -hmm. yeah it's gonna be very shallow out here it's kind of hard to see it with a glare but you, you can see how deep it is Definitely too shallow. Yeah. Yeah. What um, What do you got at the end of the pier there? Oh, I, I would think it's probably five feet. You're gonna need at least eight feet of water, maybe a little bit more, to hide that blue vehicle. And when when sun is at twelve o'clock, you're gonna you're gonna see it. I think that's the key in this is finding that eight foot plus water right near an entrance. Yeah, it's possible. Especially right here. Yeah, yeah it's possible. We definitely got to check this. Take a little bit of a run and start and you're in deep water right away here. And, you know, I know we hit this with the helicopter and but if that vehicle drifted underneath of this bridge, no telling he could be under there. From the replacement over here with the new wood, it looks like it's probably happened already. Yeah. Yeah. All right there, hold this tight. Just like that whole lot of fish thousands of fish right there thousands of fish wow seven feet out here so the locations we're checking right now are uh, places of interest that the detective Schlein has already previously marked as places of interest and concern to him. So we've ruled out one. We're coming back over here to the area we were at a few minutes ago, uh, the vacant property with the road leading right down in. Uh, we were staying up here on the deck. I estimated it to be about five or six feet deep because I could see the bottom, but just to be thorough, you know, we're 
skating it back across the river here and uh, ruling it out. Six feet right over here where we were, five feet. It goes from five feet right there where we could see the bottom on the, the dock and then it does go down. Like right now we are at nine feet. Nothing out here whatsoever. One, One two, three. three. All right, I got it. I mean, he would have to overlook the three ramps mm -hmm. to go around to get to this one. But I mean, and who knows? Who knows who he knew up here or there's just no telling. Maybe maybe somebody from his, his work, mm -hmm. and, you know, that, that we didn't know of lives up, up in that area. You never know. Right. But it's certainly close to his house and something worth And it's just, it's, it's just a piece of the puzzle that hasn't been searched at all. Let's go, let's go knock that out. Sounds good. Yep. So we're heading back up to one of the last areas up near his home that has never been searched. It's probably going to be one of the last locations we're able to search for this trip. We will be back. There's a lot of water here that still needs to be checked. So, we'll see. We'll see what this next location holds. Yeah. Oh wow, we can see the bottom. see the bottom out there you can see we can see the bottom right and there's a gate here I mean whether or not that gate was here 10 years ago or whether or not it was closed we don't know but we can see the bottom out there yeah and it's a low low probability that uh, I mean there's a lot of a lot of houses a lot of activity a lot of, yeah 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 so at, you know in 10 years you know, with the tides going out and so forth, somebody would have seen something. Mm -hmm. Well, let's look at, see if we can't put in over there. Yeah, and yeah. See if it's even an option. Okay. I mean, yeah. you know, you guys basically covered this with the drone. And right. Maybe maybe we can do the same over there. Yeah, maybe so. Are, are we missing something obvious? I, I don't like here. I don't feel like we are. We can see all the way out. Carson was, he, Joan's still up there floating around. The only thing that I was looking at on the map that could possibly be a location is the bay side of Fort Smallwood Park. I know when looking at the maps and, and look just looking at more of a, okay, maybe he's not going to pick in the, neighborhood where everybody's gonna see them on a Sunday morning a park you know it was Sandy Point was ruled out that's the, the closest we checked, we, we, we checked that whole area we'll have to collect some more data and you know talk to some family some more and let them know what we have checked mm -hmm. and then see if there's any place that as a child he went to yeah, know, yeah, yeah. Something. And and then and that that could lead us to the the location. Any any significance, right. you know, the relevance tying him like you said to his childhood. Did did you have picnics somewhere? Right. There could be a spot that he's just hanging on to in his head. Right. Cuz we know he was a loner, quiet gentleman in his later years. But I mean, what did he do during his teens? Right. Is there that location? everything that we've done over the last two days wouldn't have been possible or as efficient as it should have been without you Anne Arundel County everything that you've done for us you've showed us the software 
that's going to revolutionize everything that we do moving forward and spending two days with you learning all of your search thinking and wisdom has been like priceless like absolutely pri I, I wish i could stay here longer and spend more time and just absorb everything that you're just constantly just spewing out is crazy it's you know it's gonna change everything we do moving forward well don't change everything that you're doing <laughs> because obviously you know with your record you're doing some fantastic things yourself yeah yeah you know so you know there's a lot of things that you do that we're not doing mm -hmm. okay i mean you got the drones up with you all the time and and um y you know your viewers you, you have a large you know following mm -hmm. you know that you can reach out to and, and, and connect people and um, you know that community that we talk about yeah so it's very I mean that plays huge Does. you know so like you like you hit to your your viewers um, if you see something out there you know give you a call give local police a call and let us know so we can connect I mean you see all the pieces of the puzzle and when you look at, you know, Anne Arundel County, we have thousands of miles of, or hundreds of miles of waterfront. Yeah, and, yeah. you know, we got tributaries and we've got, you know, we've got a lot of area to cover. Mm -hmm. With that being said, again, if anybody out there knows anything, has that missing piece of information, come forward, reach out to Anne Arundel County or reach out to us directly. If you know of a case in your area involving a missing person belonging to a vehicle, whether you're a law enforcement agency, or your family, or friends, reach out to us. Let us know about that case at support at adventureswithpurpose.com. We will look into it. We rely on the community, you, our supporters, to provide us with those cases. We wouldn't be able to do what we do day in and day out when we're out here searching without you and your support. So please, if you have not already done so, please subscribe, like, share the content. That's how we reach families. That's how we reach law enforcement. We have to get back on the road. Stay tuned for the next one.